What's going on, people? Thanks for joining me again. I have another special knife here that I want to talk about. It's the Kunwu S Tau. What's so special about it? It's the steel. It's made out of Annex, super clean. And I love this blade shape. It's a great EDC blade shape. Kumu's calling it a sheep's foot. Um, I'm not sure what to call it, but I do like this blade shape. But let me uh, explain what I'm what I mean by that. So to me, uh, and I don't really want to get into a debate about this, but actually, you know, you can leave a comment down below if you disagree with me. But a traditional sheep's foot in my mind has a belly like this one. This is a Spydeco Spidey Chef. And it has sort of a rounded tip. So this one has a rounded tip, but it has a straight edge. Now, straight edge typically is associated with the Warncliffe. So that's a Warncliffe. But a Warncliffe has a very pointy tip. I'm going to consider this a Warncliffe because uh, one of the identifying features of a Warncliffe is a straight edge. Call it what you want. Moving on. So let's go over some high-level facts about this knife. So the overall length of this knife is 8 0.07 inches or 205 millimeters. So I'm going to call that, you know, a larger size knife. And it certainly fits into that category. Let's do a little knife comparison here. So that is a Hinderer Eclipse. I'm going to pull this knife out. These are all, um, that's a TRM Atom. Here's my Chavez 229. We'll stop right there. So it's all, it's in this eight inch, eight and a quarter inch. This is kind of the size that I like of a knife. So um, part of the reason why I got it is the size. The blade length on this knife is 3.46 inches or 88 millimeters. The handle length on this is four and 10 sixteenths. So it's a little bit over four and a half inches. The blade thickness is 0 0.13 inches or 3.2 millimeters. Blade material is Vanex, super clean. Just love that. And it's uh, the Rockwell on that is 60 to 62. And so basically you're targeting 61, which is the right heat treatment for this steel. The blade finish on it is a satin. And the texturing on the scales is like this orange peel texturing. It's actually kind of cool. These scales do have uh, milling inside, weight reducing milling inside. So this knife is, you know, feels light to me. So this knife has a steel lock bar insert. And you can tell, typically when it has a screw here, that's screwing in the steel lock bar insert onto the titanium frame. It should resist wear longer. And this also has an internal over travel stop, so you can't push out the frame lock too far. Knife is made in China, and it retails for $279 on Kumu's website as of January 2024. All the fasteners on this knife is a T8, except for this uh, screw right here that's holding in the lock bar insert. That's a T6. And for me, I can't really use this uh, opening in a blade here to flick out the knife. I've seen people do it. I don't know if it's my detent or it's me or, or what, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me, but I'm calling it out. You know, before I get into my likes and dislikes, I like to just talk generally on a high level. What are my thoughts about this knife? If you're a big knife guy, this knife's going to feel small. Now, for your typical person, this is probably a, a big knife. I know my man, Satu Dave, is going to think this is small. You also check out Satu Dave. He's a great guy. He is in the knife community. He works on modifying your knife. He could blast your scales. He does regrind work. can put thumb studs on a knife, fix the detent ball. He'll see this knife and he'll say, man, that's a tiny knife. That's a good backup knife. <laughs> and I say the same thing. I mean... It is a, I like the knife because it is, you know, I don't like a smaller knife than this typically, and it's a light knife, so, and it's in Vanix, and quite frankly, if you want the, the blade steel Vanix, you really have slim pickings. This knife comes with two wire clip pocket clips and these barrel spaces, uh, blue barrel spaces. So the mill clip that comes with it worked really well, you know. I will probably change this to the wire clips just because I'm a function over form guy any day of the week all day long and wire clips usually work very well and it's a little more conspicuous you know I think the wire clip also will you know ride a little little higher and not that I care about that but I like the fact that it's easier in and out usually the wire clip is easier to get in and out of your pocket 
and it doesn't tear up your po pocket as much. So f that's a, a better function for me. So I'm going to probably change it, and I'm going to definitely put the blue spacers in there to give it a little pop. But I'm going to wait. I had some uh, surgery on my hand, so I'm going to wait till my hand's done, and then I'll do a full disassembly and changing that over. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see that coming. Because this knife is a left or right carry, and because they offer a wire clip option, the show side has these little grooves in there where the wire clip would pop into it. So it's a, it makes the, the show side a little bit busy. It doesn't bother me at all. Again, I am a function over form guy, but if you're, you know, if this bothers you, there it is. And this knife doesn't have a lanyard holes. This knife comes in really centered. Look at that, dead on. This knife also has a front and rear flipper. So here's a the rear flipper, like a normal flipper. And here's the front. Took me a little while to get used to that flipping action. I'm a little bit be I'm a little bit better at it now. Uh, don't judge me here on the, the camera because there's no room here. You know, the front flipper is pretty cool. I got used there we go. Look at that. I got used to that. So Like I said, this is a two deployment method, front and rear flipper, and I really like this front flipper. And that's another thing that's unique about it. Um, it's the first knife that has that, and I'm looking for different knives. I don't need another 20 CV frame lock. That's what I'm saying. And just as a general high level call out, this blade shape is not designed for piercing. Now you can pierce like packages, right? You can definitely get in there could open a bubble wrap, absolutely no problem. But in terms of a, a self-defense kind of piercing knife, this is definitely not that. And last kind of high-level fact about this knife is it's got a, a flat grind. So now we're going to get into my likes. Now, don't forget, I like a bigger, heavier, hard-use knife. So typically, that's my favorite. And then everything else is kind of second best. So what I love about this knife is the steel. Vanix Super Clean. The, the great thing about Vanix Super Clean is that it's a uh, extremely rust resistant steel that has amazing edge retention. And you can get that edge retention at a much lower Rockwell. If you treat this at a lower hardness, you'll still get edge retention of S45 VN, which is not a shabby edge retention. But if you treat it at the proper hardness, which is like around 61 is the target for this steel for Vanix Super Clean, you can get the edge retention of like M390. And you get the rust resistance of like an LC200N because both those steels are um, nitrogen-based steels. You know, there's not a lot of blade steels out there that compares to Vanix. I mean, I'm not a, a steel nerd, so, you know, if I say something wrong here, please, you know, forgive me. It's it's unintentional. But, you know, one of the blade steels I think that comes close to this is Magnet Cut. When I say when it comes close to it, I mean comes close to the stainlessness and edge retention properties. But the difference between these two is that to get the same level of properties with magnet cut, you have to go to a much higher hardness. You got to go to like 63, 64 to get the same properties that you can get out of Annex at 61. And because it costs the producer a lot more money to produce a knife at a higher Rockwell, the chances are they might miss that target. Harder steel goes through belts quicker and also takes a longer time to grind the steel properly. And, you know, you're paying an employee by the hour. You know, manufacturers a lot of times will come back and say, well, at those high hardnesses, the metal becomes brittle and, and, and difficult to sharpen. So, you know, most customers can't do that. So I'm I'm purposely lowering the hardness to make it easier for customers to sharpen and uh, also to prevent the knife or to help reduce the chipping of that knife. And, you know, basically I call BS on that. Manufacturers doing is reducing their cost to produce that knife. So one of my other likes about this knife is this pivot. I like the design of it. I don't normally talk about design elements, but I'm talking about what I like, right? So it almost looks like a Green Lantern ring. If you know anything about comic books, you know what I'm talking about. And it has this blue hint of color around here. Officially, the website doesn't say what that material is. So I'm not going to make any claims of what that is. But 
I like the pivot. And if you look at, you know, you can't see it probably that well, but in the center of that pivot is the uh, a T8 fastener. And it's kind of hidden. So I like that. Right. While I don't really care about the looks so much, I mean, if they can make it cleaner, definitely I like a cleaner look. I like the fact that, you know, the knife comes with this hardware. It comes with the tool. Um, let me say some backspaces, colored backspaces, and uh, two wire pocket clips. I guess if one breaks, you got another one. Comes with that and a mill pocket clip. And by the way, this pocket clip works pretty good. Probably not going to be as good as this wire clip, but that's you know based on history. I don't really know. I can't really speak to it for now. And I like that. Um, I like a front flipper. This is my first front front flipper, and I like it. I'm going to call that as a like. Another thing I like is the two deployment methods. It's got a front and rear flipper. I think that's awesome. Now I'm going to get into some aesthetics of the knife that I like. This knife right here in the center is pinched. There's milling on the scales here and here, right where the frame lock is. And it's thinner here. And I like the feel of that. When you put your hand on there, it, it gives it some contouring and it fits the hand better. Also, this uh, chamfering here is milled. It's got lines on it. So it's not just a, you know, it's got a lot of extra work on it. Even if you look at the frame lock, the screw here, there's a collar around it. And not only there's a collar, there's milling lines going down the collar. So there's a lot of extra work. Also, this chamfering corner is not a straight line. It's thinner here and it, and then it thickens out to this line. And not only does it do that, it twists. There's some work going on here. And then you have this texturing too. So I'm not how, sure how difficult it is to put the texturing. But there's attention to detail here. And, you know, this chamfering makes the ends feel thinner and rounder. And it just gives it a little smoother feel to it. Uh, this aspect of the knife I really care about. How does it feel in my hand, right? Because I like holding on to my knives and, and uh, if I'm not using them, I, I will sometimes fidget with them. So to me, it's important. You know, a knife is a lot more than just a cutting tool. I mean, I want it to be on me as a tool, but it's got to it's got to do more for me than just be able to, you know, open a box. And that's just where I'm at. You don't have to be at the same spot as me, but that's where I'm at. I like that this knife has a steel lock bar insert and an internal over travel stop. You know, this knife comes in at $280. And, you know, while that's not cheap for what you're getting, it's not a bad price. You know, there's no, this is the cheapest Vanix knife that you can buy um, that I'm aware of. The other knife that's more expensive, you know, Quiet Carry makes a two Vanix knives. And I think one's like, three hundred and five dollars and another one's three hundred and thirty there's some value here for for the money right you're getting you know top end steel vanix i mean no one else is doing it you're getting the right heat treatment and they're giving you you know pocket clips they're giving you uh two extra wire pocket clips plus colorized backspacers for what for two hundred and eighty dollars two hundred and eighty dollars is not cheap don't get me wrong but I think there's a value here, and that's up to you to agree or disagree. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. Yeah, so one of the things I like about this knife is the access to the lock bar. Nice and big. It's uh, chamfered on both sides, and I can stick my big fat thumb in there. Very nice. And I actually like this hardware. These screws are, they got like a little sidewall to them. They got a nice look to it, you know, for, for basic hardware got a nice look to it and they're they're flush so they feel good i like that there's not a lot of branding on this knife right. you got the kunru logo right there i mean this side's a little busy but it doesn't bother me but you don't see a lot of you know branding otherwise i mean you have this s tau vanix and the logo what else the action on this knife is really good. Now it's a little, almost a little too drop shot for me, and I haven't tightened the pivot yet. I can, I'm going to dial that in. I kind of like it when I have to flick it just a little bit, just to get it rolling. 
right? But it's on bearings. It's a great knife. There's absolutely no double clutch. Um, this knife clears that detent ball. Right, right there is where the detent ball is. And then right there is when you clear it. So now it, it will drop shut. It'll drop shut right there. That's really good. This knife really doesn't have any hot spots except for this rear thumb flick thing. That's probably the, you know, the worst feature on this knife here. We'll get to that. But yeah, the um, pocket clip, man, there's no hot spots there at all. I mean, you can, I'm going to say you can feel it because, you know, I mean, it's there, but I don't know. I really don't feel it. <laughs> and this area right here is very difficult to have no hot spots. The frame lock meets the scale, meets the blade tang. And, it, you know, it's got to be pretty good geometry there, right? T tight tolerances and some chamfering to get that area to be smooth. And even that area is pretty good. There's absolutely no play in this blade at all. None whatsoever. It's a, it's rock solid. Another thing I like about this knife is the ergos. Now, it, they are flat scales, but they're chamfered, and um, it just feels good in my hand. My, I have a double XL hand, and my hand fits on the, whole, the entire knife. You know, just barely. So if you're looking for a, a much bigger handle, this is not it. I mean, it feels good to me. I like where my finger falls on the jimping here. I feel like there's a lot of control. I really like this suggested finger area here right it doesn't feel slippery either i don't know if it's because of uh it's probably a combination of everything right this orange peel texture is, is really really nice i like that and this knife has a great sharpening trail way past the plunge grind just excellent for the for you guys that like sharpen your knives like crazy now, for me, that doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, I'll probably strop this knife 20 times before I'll even think about sharpening it once. Because I'm just not doing really hard use stuff with that. You know, not unless I'm in an emergency. You know, if I'm in an emergency, I'll use this knife. And finally, this knife came in really sharp. It's got a lot of control when you cut with this knife. I'm going to insert the cutting videos right here. And then I'll get back to my dislikes at that point. Let's do a uh, quick... Cut test here. So what do we have? Nice. It's not a complete slicer, but it's nice. It's sharp. That's that's good. You feel control for sure. Like I can get down to this tip here. You definitely feel like you have control. I like that. And then quick cuts. Yeah, no, very, very good. And then, you know, that's why you get this. You get for this uh, box cutting action. It's beautiful. Definitely very good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Feels, feels really good in the hands. Got a lot of control. You can, you know, you can get down on the tip and then definitely power right through that. I like that. Very good. It's a flat grind. It's like a saber grind. I mean, because yeah, it's got a full tang up here. I mean, it's sharp, but it's not super sharp. It's it's chamfered. You can definitely, you know, spark something off of that. No doubt. Oh, I like it. Very sharp. Let's see. We got the box over here. Let's try that. Now, I don't have a lot of room here in the camera. So, hopefully, we can make this look good. Let's just try that. And my hand's kind of jacked up, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at that. That was real easy, and I, I don't really want to put any pressure on this hand, so I'm just kind of trying to hold the box. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that just, like, sliced it open like it was a fish. Like you were gutting a fish. Very good. No, absolutely. That's a, a thumbs up. So just before I get into my dislikes, I just want to say that every knife that I've owned, even the ones that I love, there's something about it that I don't like. Fanboys out there, just take it easy. 
at the end of the day, I feel my job is to share with you my thoughts. Sometimes they're based on my preferences and they can be definitely different than yours. And it's okay to have a different opinion. Just because I say I don't like something or there's I'm concerned about something doesn't mean that the knife is bad. And uh, the product could still be wonderful and there could be an area or two for improvement. So if I find fault with something about a knife, it's a, it's a nitpick typically. Well, I think this list here is going to be very short. And, you know, when it gets down to this knife, all my dislikes are sort of nitpicks. The dislikes to me is always the most important thing in a reviewer. So what, you know, do I think could be improved on this knife? One of the things for sure is this rear flipper. So with this rear flipper, I recognize that there was a design choice made here. They wanted something that was small that you could still use to flip out the knife, but that disappeared once it was engaged. So if they had made that flipper very, very big, it would be hanging down below here. And they were obviously just trying to avoid that. They wanted uh, clean lines. And how do I know that? Because that's what they have. They have clean lines. So uh, as a design choice, they didn't want to have a big flipper tab on while it's closed or while it's open. So they made this small little flipper tab. But they do have this front flipper, which kind of hangs out a little bit. It's different. I mean, whether you like this look or not, you don't need me to tell you if I like it or not. It doesn't really matter what I like, right? I'll tell you, it doesn't bother me at all. I really don't care what anything looks like. I am function over form, right? So, it's fine. But I'm putting this in my dislike because... It hurts to deploy it. I was thinking, you know, I'm going to take out my green compound on my Dremel and smooth it out. But this is, you know, I, it might be slippery at that point. Uh, I don't know. I'm putting that in the dislike column. Not a big deal. But it's just small. And because it's small, the detent feels strong when I deploy it using this, right? So it, I would, I'm tempted to say, in fact, when I was, you know, getting my thoughts together, my thought was the detent ball is way, way too strong for this knife. Because when you use the rear flipper, it just feels way too strong. But when you use the front flipper, it feels good. It feels like the detent is just right. And that's probably because of the physics, right? You got a lot more leverage using it this way. Where this rear flipper, my my finger is definitely very sore from using you know this rear flip uh, flipper, so I'm not really happy about that. You know, some people care about that because that flipper hanging down prevents you from getting this blade all the way down. Whether it had a finger guard or doesn't have a finger guard, to me it doesn't really matter. It's uh, ergonomic enough. I feel like I'm locked in enough where the finger guard really wouldn't add that much more, you know, protection. It obviously would add protection, but how much more protection is the question? I don't really know. But, you know, the fact that this does not have a finger guard doesn't really bother me. What does bother me is how pointy that tip is in the rear flipper. This rear flipper is painful. I am nitpicking here. So nitpick number one. I don't like how sharp that uh, rear flipper is. So... Nitpick number one. Nitpick number two. What I'm going to call as a dislike is that hole, right? That hole in that blade, that finger, the finger hole. Since I can't use it, that's a big tease. Now, I'm making a little bit of a joke here, but I'm going to put that in a dislike column. This this hole is definitely a big tease to me. It's a, uh, that is, that detent is in there really good. And I got my fingers off the lock bar. See, I've been doing this a while. And now I've seen people rear flick it. Right. What I'm going to put also in the dislike column is the uh, the weight reduction in the milling. Like, why? I like a heavy knife. Why, why are you making this a light knife? You know, this knife could have been perfect. If you made it heavy, it would have been perfect. You got to go back to the drawing board. Add some weight to this thing. Thank you. For dislike, I'm going to say that I dislike that it's made in China versus being made in the U.S. 
So Kumu is a new company. I think 2019 is about when they started. I'm not really sure if they own their own production facilities or everything's outsourced. I'm not going to call it a dislike, but I'm going to call it as a question mark is these fasteners are all steel, but I'm not sure what kind of steel it is. And when I say fasteners, I also mean the steel lock bar insert. I did message the owner and he hasn't responded. I'm sure, it's some sort of stainless steel, but I'm not sure how rust resistant that steel is. So, you know, I got this knife because of its rust resistant properties. I'm outdoors a lot. I'm doing a lot of stuff that uh, I'm in humidity, I'm in rain, and uh, I wanted a rust resistant knife. But I'm not quite sure how much rust would develop on this knife in those areas. The pivot and all these screws here are, are steel. Not sure what kind of steel, but they're steel. So that potentially could be a problem, right? Calling that out. I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's a question mark. Another thing I'm going to call out as a dislike, but for me it's not really a dislike, is how far away that blade is from the uh, from your hand. Now, I, I guess if you're EDCing it, you could choke up on, on this, right? You're doing simple tasks. It's not going to matter. But where your hand naturally falls, it's far away from the cutting edge, right? There's no design choke up position. It's designed to be a flipper that doesn't hang down. It's not designed to be a choke up position. It works as one, you know, not great, but it works as one. And, and I say it's not great because it's not contoured. It's just a flat surface. But I'm going to call that out as a, uh, a negative though. Blade is far away from the hand. And the last thing I'm going to call out is something I don't like is uh, this blade tip. Uh, why are they putting a sheep's foot tip on a Warncliffe blade? I wonder what it's identified as. What is this, what is this knife's pronouns? I don't know, but I would have preferred a... Yeah, let me show you. I would have preferred this tip. Nice flat surface with a pointy tip. Why not? I'm calling it out, but I just want to let you know it's a nitpick. So, you you know, fanboys over there, calm down. All right. I think that kind of sums it up. You know, the list of dislikes was really short, nitpicky. At the end of the day, in summary, I like this knife. You know, I'm not buying a lot of knives. So, the ultimate compliment is I bought this knife. It's got impressive steel. The heat treat's being done right, from what I understand. The company's putting a lot of effort into new knife designs. Kumu is kind of kind of got a buzz right now. They're introducing uh, simply designed knives with excellent fit and finish at a reasonable price versus the competition. You got to respect the company that's out there doing their thing. You got to go check out the uh, Kumu Facebook group. They, they call themselves an asylum or something like that. Really interesting group over there. The company's doing some great things out there. I'm excited by them. And it's one of the only companies that is using Vanix. And that's why I'm interested in them. So let's summarize this whole knife. Well, as a tactical knife, this knife is no good. I mainly say that because of the tip. It doesn't have a, a piercing tip. I think every tactical knife should have a piercing tip. But this knife is a great EDC knife, especially if you don't mind a bigger size knife. That's a big caveat, so take that to heart. This is definitely not a small knife, and you probably would not consider this to be a light knife. But to me, I consider it small and light. And a perfect EDC knife. This Warncliffe sheep's foot is amazing for opening packages and slicing paper. And biggest selling point to this knife is the steel and the blade shape. I'm not really sure about the hardware, but the blade steel is absolutely no maintenance. So it's not really good at food prep because it doesn't have a belly. And the knife carries really well in the pocket. It's light. The pocket clip works really well. There's no hot spots. Just a great overall EDC knife. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you watching, spending time watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up and uh, check out my playlist. I've got a lot of content in, out there. Thanks again for joining and I will see you soon.